So this video is going to go over how I got the horizontal stabilizer installed into the empennage. The first thing I did was put the trim torque tube assembly together inside the horizontal. Remember there's two assemblies that are mirror images of each other, one for each horizontal stab. They look like this once they're installed. So once you've got your trim torque tubes in your horizontal stabilizers, you can attach the through tube to the uh, stabs, which then is going to bolt to the brackets, which are part of the fuselage. The bushing there between the bracket and the through tube comes from the factory with the kit and is what establishes your three degree down angle. You may have to adjust yours, as we'll cover later on. The trailing edge of the horizontal stabs just slide onto a fitting that's right here. It only sticks out about an inch or inch and a half or so into that tube, and that's all that holds it on. Now if you look here, I've still got the stickers on that came with the kit. I'll try to get a closer look. Now it says right, down, and left, up. Those stickers are really important because this stuff only aligns one way. It's mass drilled at the factory. So make sure you get that just right. The next thing to attach is your struts, which start with a clevis and a stop nut, uh, an AN4 I believe, and then attach up at the front of the horizontal stabilizers with another bolt. Uh, this may not line up perfectly. Your tab off the fuselage and your clevis fork here are at a bit of an angle. So I was surprised at how easy you can bend that. Uh, you may not be, but all I did is wrap some electrical tape around a, a uh, wrench like this and just give it a little tug and real slowly moved it into position and now it matches up perfectly. So this piece here actually has more parts than it looks. To make this all fit properly, you've got AN4 size holes in your clevis fork and AN3 size hole here. You can either drill that out or you can put bushings in the clevis fork. I chose bushings. So there's tiny little bushings that you can't see. This is the bolt. There's a thick and a thin washer in here, and then you're not. So there's quite a few pieces of hardware in this little And there spot. is supplied bushing material that is perfect for this job. The next thing I would recommend doing is attaching some temporary flying wires. First, you'll have to affix the brackets that look like this. You'll kind of have to figure out which ones go where and then maybe adjust them the same way you adjust the bracket for the strut. Once you get that generally attached, the first thing you need to do is start leveling everything out. Now your reference for level front to back, I guess your longitudinal level, is this um, tube right here or the one on the other side. So I've got a level taped in place. Despite that last image, I worked hard to get it as exactly as possible. I've chalked my wheels because I've got the tail up here, and I don't want it to accidentally fall over on me. I'm a klutz, so it's easy to see that happening. Level. And now the uh, horizontal stab is going to be down three degrees based on the size of the bushing I've got in there. On aircraft right, the bushing was perfect, or as close as I could measure it to three degrees. On the left-hand side, I had to adjust it later on. As far as putting a level on all the different pieces here, I've got these little pieces of plywood taped in place so I have a straight line above all of the ribs and other obstructions. I wound up putting a handful of these plywood shims on both the vertical and horizontal stabilizers so that I had ways to measure in several different directions. I think I forgot to mention that to get this tail post perfectly uh, vertical, I had to put a bit of uh, plywood underneath one of the wheels that I've got chopped over here. And that tipped the uh, tail just enough to get everything vertical so I could use it as a, a reference. So once you've got your longitudinal level datum established, you can then set your vertical stabilizer perfectly vertical. Once you've got that, hook up some temporary flying wires to set the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer perfectly level, which will then, of course, be perpendicular to the vertical stabilizer. So once you've got the trailing edge aligned, you can begin to work on the inboard horizontal stabilizer's three degree deflection. 
you're going to do that by adjusting these little bushings that uh, come with the factory, if necessary. They might be perfect for you. For me, the right side was perfect and the left side required a little bit of shimming to be just right. I used a couple of washers, but there's more than one way to skin that cat. So we'll talk about how I got that three degree down deflection. I then used the strut to match that three degree down deflection on the outside of the horizontal stabilizer. So after a review of trigonometry that I hadn't used in a decade, I determined that we need one in 13 30 seconds an elevation difference between the trailing edge and leading edge for a three degree deflection over the width of the stabilizer, 26 and a half inches. These other figures are here just so I could figure out how close my tolerances were going to be. So if I lift this level up to where it's indicating level, this ruler should be about one and three eighths above my reference point, which is the top of the plywood. So it should be right about there. Okay, I've got this set to one and three eighths. And the level is indicating level, which is what we want. That means I've got three degrees between the level and my stabilizer here. But please note, I'm only using this to rough in my three degree angle. I plan on using a optical level um, as well as any other means that I can come up with to verify this measurement later on. So when you unwrap your elevators, the first thing I would do is cut off your trim tabs. I use a Dremel tool, you could use any kind of a saw, including a hacksaw as recommended by Eric Newton. And then I would grind or file everything flush with the surrounding frame. It attaches with these little pins to the elevator. And then you can set up your push rods, like so, uh, using these little Aurora bearings that come with the kit. And then they just bolt right onto the uh, trim tabs. In this picture, you can see some contact between the push rod and the uh, elevator. That shouldn't happen. I had to bend that tube a little more to make it work. And over here, you can see how the push rod from the trim tab lines up. So I lined up the right hand side and then used that to position the trim horns and that kind of forced the position of the left hand side and it stuck out about to here so I had to cut that much off. Okay so we've got it mostly back together now so you can see how the uh, trim horns are uh, lined up. You know, these need to be offset to the left aircraft left of the elevator belt crank here or elevator arms or horns or whatever they call them so that the cables don't interfere. Now this gap here and here are going to be maintained by using a little piece of half inch inside diameter tubing. So this is what it looks like with the spacer installed. Don't worry about the goofy way I installed those bolts and the trim horns. That's, that's just me being goofy. So after you've got everything lined up and you figure out how much room you need for each spacer and how much you're going to cut off of your left trim and torque tube and how you're going to drill for your trim torque horns and arms, go ahead and disassemble everything, take care of that business, put it all back together again, and you'll actually be able to see some moving parts. I didn't do it in this sequence. Uh, I worked out this method after I'd already gone through the process, and I think this will work a little better than the way I did it. So I hope it works for you. Thanks for watching.